Hi there, I'm Alimul Karim. In this video, we will be seeing the log for net integration and some of the other methods like uh, API call, how we can get multiple contents and so on. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start with log for net. So for log for net, we actually need a log file like this. So we will publish this with this project. The idea here is that uh, we are also publishing the uh, log for net config file uh, in the directory where we're uh, outputting the project and uh, it is really very simple uh, every one of the log for net is that we just have to create a appender so for for simplicity or for dividing up the logs i have created several uh, um, appenders like uh, for the errors the the error logs will be written in a error file inside the logs and then at the logs and then errors uh, file uh, for for the errors i'm also combining errors and warning and fatal errors all together uh, for debug i'm only uh, adding the uh, warning and so, so others so you can just check this out and see that where each file goes and how it is so you could create your own appender uh, created here and then link it here it will show up and once you create the uh, log for net and it's it's your um, let's say controlling factor that you want the console output or not so here uh, for uh, demonstrating purpose i'm also adding a color uh, console appender um, it is a color console appender so whatever name you provide in here you just have to add it here and for all the logs it will run filter the logs like uh, here i have done the filtering so this is how you could uh, filter you could deny all the other filters only this one will apply so here is another one diagnostic for for this one i think diagnostic all uh, uh all the uh, logs that comes up here will will be printed and logs into this file so for all the logs that is coming in for debug whatever that is it is coming to here for specific logs it is going to be saved into its specific file okay so inside the log how the logs is going to come we could format it as we like but for now it is written like this you could do it for whatever way that you like you could just rename refactor and it should work now uh, the first thing that you need in the class or the startup it could be a ui project in the class or the startup it could be a ui project or whatever uh, where you start the project i mean the program uh, class program uh, whatever you start you just first thing you create is this one this is the first thing that you should create as a static log and um, for, for the log helper you should enable the debug mode and the next step is that you create the um, log for net actually uh, we have to configure okay so th this one this is where we configure the log for net object if we decompile this the code here is pretty simple it checks that uh, the given file name is there if it is there then it's going to um, going to uh, configure this with, with the file name that is given so for for us since it's going to be in the same folder we could just give the direct uh, file name in here it should should work but just to be specific we should do it by uh, the path helper and then get base path something with the base path given this this is the path where the uh, config will be there So this is our config file. We're calling this, and then uh, these these log for net will be catching the logs to 
to let the framework know that the log that we want to have all the injection, we just have to set it with the log. That's it. It's, that's the one place setup that we have to do. Uh, and everywhere else, we just call the log helper dot info or whatever, it would be logged properly. So let's just start with the exception. Let's not throw this time. So it will come as red since it's an exception. Uh, if I do an info here, log helper dot info, I could do a quick info. something like this. This is an info. I could do a debug. Debug is in YOLO. Uh, I could do other stuff like fatal one. Something like this. Um, I could do a warning. This is the warning. So uh, this is how I could go on and on and I could log anything. And I also have the uh, other examples like uh, displaying a full object uh, using this uh, log. It, it will also write to the file also. So anything you do with the log helper, it would write to file, append to uh, console or whatever that you put the configuration on. Okay, uh, now to, to demonstrate that the logs are there in the file, let me open the files. So you see that uh, these are the exceptions and the logs, appropriate file number, line number, everything. Even uh, the diagnostic all will have all the infos. So it should have the QDebug and debug that we just put info, debug, fatal, error, whatever. Okay, so this is how it is. Now, le let's take a quick look at uh, the API level. Uh, let's say this one. So we have uh, several versions of our, let's say, NuGet package. To download these contents, let's say we want to download all these contents, whatever we have, uh, we could do our content and use the API helper, get all the contents, and we could get or give a URL list and then print to true, that's it. Now let's create this uh, URL list in here. Let's say this is one, zero, three, one of four, something like this. Now, these contents, whenever I get the contents, I can only print out the um, contents first few characters. Let's say whatever contents I get, the results will be the array of the results as a model result. So let me solve. So let me take uh, the result and then let me just uh, take, let's say, sub string of 0 to 15, 150, let's say, or we could do a little less, let's say 50 characters. And uh, content and our index is We, we do the URL here and let's return both of these or probably uh, just print those out log helper dot info or we could do uh, debug also we do the URL and then the content
that simple. Okay. And run this select, we could just do a two array, it will uh, run the results. Oh, I am not returning anything. Let's say return null. Or returning w. Okay. So let's let's run it. So you see that all of the requests are sent uh, parallelly and uh, the contents are uh, outputted like the document format the first half of the document first half of the document is printed in here so this is how we could use the api helper uh, to get our api contents or the url contents there are also a lot of other methods like uh, the singleton and the cache uh, there is a cache uh, called static cache I think the common cache, the name is common cache. The idea here is that we could actually set uh, any value, let's say S to any object also. We could, we could keep uh, URL uh, list also. And then we could also print this out to see that whatever data that we have. Uh, the idea of this cache is that we, this is a static object, so in a process, in a single process, so it will not be same throughout all the process, but for the single process, the cache list will be same. Uh, we, we, can, we can think of it somewhat like session uh, in the user's browser, but the idea of the session is that uh, even though they, they are on a different machines, um, I mean, even though they, they close the browser, the session will be there in the browser. Uh, that's the uh, difference between the cache and the uh, this this uh, cache and the session. Session will store. Uh, I mean, I mean, could store a cookie a key key token in the web browser, and that will uh, keep the security and keep the data throughout. But it keeps per user. Uh, this uh, common cache is one-time thing, but for the running objects, we could get and set the data and use the, I mean, for like the RAM. Let's say we, we have some data. We want to keep the data for some time as long as the application is running. We want to use the, uh, the caching, caching feature. So this is when we use the common cache. Okay. There are a lot of methods uh, like... Uh, get the data uh, get data as date in long string dynamic and also we could get the states i mean how many states that each data is modified so i, I could do it like this that the first time s is now second time s is actually a new list let's say string of list uh, the third time let's make it uh, the list the one problem is that iList couldn't be uh, tracked by uh, by the uh, by the state co collector, so it may fail. Uh, le let's let's do it like this. We will have two states at least. So we will have all the data. Oh, I'm, I'm mistaken. It should be log print. Log print, okay? So we don't need these items anymore. Log print in here. So see that uh, we have the first uh, dictionary, uh, which is the core part of the object here. Uh, for common cache, we have these S to all this data on, on, the, on the list. And um, how many times the data has been changed? We could see it uh, here that the first time the data 
uh, was empty and the second time we have some values in the data so it could it could go also for a string and other types also the type as we want uh, there is also another uh, type which is called the singleton helper which also helps us uh, creating new objects singular time not multiple so let's say if I say the person uh, one something like this let's wrap this uh, new to some console dot right line Okay, now the idea here is that every time I ask the create uh, for, let's say, name of person, this is the key here. So it, it should give me the person to object, but since it's the singleton helper, it should, uh, the singleton helper, it should uh, create the person only at once. So if I Call the second time, third time, um, let's say person three, person three, person four. Okay, uh, so all of these uh, cases is uh, not going to return a new instance, but the single one which we have created here. Okay, now uh, to demonstrate that everything is right, we could do a console log here. We could do person four is equal to person, let's say two. Person two. Now, uh, for the object, it, it will never be same. I mean, unless we uh, override the equal operator, unless those are it will come as false if those two are different objects. Let's run it. So it's true. See and. For all the console uh, right line, it actually didn't run. So that proves that it only created the single object. So any object, if we want to create at once only, not multiple, we just do it like this: single tone helper, dot dot dot, whatever the parameter, whatever that we need, we could just pass it on, and then we will have it. We could have a class of. Uh, all the creation uh, logic and we could just call that a static class here in the argument or probably just point that function and that would create the object only at once not more than that that's it so 